I don't have many memories of my childhood. Out of the few memories I do have, less than a handful are good ones. They say it's the way the brain protects itself, goes into survival mode. You'd think that was a good thing, right? Not remembering the bad, but you're left with empty blocks of time. I don't know which is better. Sometimes I get flashes of memories from different events all jumbled up. And sometimes I will see something completely normal and random and I get this feeling, like someone punched me in the stomach. I'm nauseous, looking for the nearest place to puke if I can't hold it in. Tiny beads of sweat line my forehead. I can feel my armpits getting wet. I can feel my heart pumping in my ears. What the hell is that? Did anyone notice? I can't eat a big breakfast from McDonald's anymore. If I see one, even read it off the menu, I'm taken back to the time my mother sh yelled and shoved me at the McDonald's when I was five, simply because I wasn't using my silverware properly to cut up my pancake. Ridiculous, right? To say I didn't grow up in a loving home would be an understatement. My earliest childhood memory is when I was about four, maybe five, I was sitting on the cold staircase to our second floor apartment in the Bronx. I can smell the urine on the staircase landing. I can hear the opening and closing of the he heavy metal door into the building as the crackheads and drug dealers walk in and out. Then heavy footsteps coming up, muffled voices coming from a radio. Two big police officers are standing in front of me. One of them says, hi, where's your mom or dad? I turn around and go into my apartment. I walk straight through the long dark hallway that seems to get longer as I walk. My mom looks from me to the police officers. I hide behind her. I'm terrified. I don't hear anything they're saying. My feet are glued to the floor. I just think to myself, will they take me away? Will they take her away? I'm in so much trouble, more trouble than I already was. I can't breathe. I'm nauseous. They leave. I exhale. I'm safe, or am I? When I was a small child, I daydreamed a lot. After my mother finished beating me with her latest weapon of choice, I'd lay on my secondhand bunk bed that I shared with my brother and sister. My body sore and still shaking, eyes swollen shut from crying. I would wonder if maybe I was in a movie, a fictional character in a screenplay, hidden cameras all around me, filming. This all has to be leading to a happy ending, right? As I let the lullabies of the two train that passed outside my window put me to sleep, I thought, I just have to wait it out. I'm rocking my weak old newborn in an apartment on the opposite coast of my childhood home. Her eyes slowly open and close as she tries to fight her sleep. No lullabies from the subway on this side of the country to put her to sleep. Just the sound of the palm trees swishing in the wind. Her newborn smell fills my nostrils, and I want to cry. Flashbacks fill my head. How can anyone hurt an innocent child? How can anyone not love their child? I can't help it. I cry. I hold my baby to my chest and whisper, I promise I'll never hurt you. I promise I'll always love you. The rest of my childhood memories come from my older brother and sister recounting stories. Sad stories retold with awkward laughs in between. Remember the time when, insert memory here. No, I don't remember, I tell my brother. You used to cry so much as a baby, he continues. Mom would get so angry with you. One time I had to pull her off of you, scared she was going to kill you. <laughs> he chuckles, I smile. An empty, forced smile. I have that feeling again, like I got punched in the stomach. I'm nauseous, I have to puke. Are my ears ringing? I feel myself shrinking. I look around, can they tell? I'm exhausted. Is it Tuesday? No, it's Thursday. I have dark circles around my eyes and bags that look like I am going on a month long trip. I've changed my shirt from spit up three times and it's not even noon yet. I hear crying from the baby monitor that's in the laundry basket I'm carrying over to the laundry room, laundry room for what feels like the billionth time. You used to cry so much as a baby. Mom would get so angry with you. I hear my brother's voice say, 
I rest my hands on the cold metal of the washing machine. Loud cries blare from the tiny monitor. I take a deep breath. Hold it. Breathe out. It's okay. She's just a baby. Babies cry. The laundry can wait another day. As I got older, I remember hating when my alcoholic father would leave the house. Mom would, won't be in a good mood. Must be on my best behavior, I told myself. I scream. I feel the leather belt whip across my wet back while I stand in the shower. What did I do? Don't cry. Just take it. It's okay, I lied to myself. Just a few more years, then I'll be free. While other children received hugs and kisses in their warm, comfy homes, I got bruises and burn marks. While children heard their moms call them cute pet names like Cupcake and hear countless of I love yous, I got called a useless piece of shit. My mother would scream at the top of her lungs, I wish I never had you. It's okay, I told myself. Just wait. It'll be over one day. My mother tried to slap me the other day. I caught her by the wrist before the back of her hand met my cheek. I was scared as fuck. I held her gaze. The room went still. Sounds of neighbors playing music and other neighbors fighting filled the room. The train sang its familiar lullaby. Her eyes had fear in them for the first time instead of anger, power. I hold my breath for what feels like minutes until she walks away. Adrenaline courses through me. I feel nauseous. I'm going to puke. When will I get some sleep? She won't stop crying. I've tried everything. She won't stop crying, I scream, crouched down on the cold kitchen floor. It's midnight and the entire complex is sound asleep. All except our two-month-old baby. Flashbacks fill my head. The baby continues crying. I squeeze my eyes shut real tight, put my hands over them like I just got pepper sprayed. I breathe short, deep breaths. Maybe you should see someone, he says, holding her, bouncing up and down. I look up at him. I look at her. Yeah, I think you're right. The beatings, slaps, and shoving ended. Finally, I sighed a sigh of relief. I should have held my breath. It really was too good to be true. It just so happened that the verbal and mental abuse I received as a baby and child was only a small preview of what I would receive as a teenager. You're gaining weight, mija. Estás gordita, she said. We were at the mall shopping for clothes for the new school year. Wow, she said with a look of disgust in her eye. Your sister is so much smaller than you. That was just the beginning of the body shaming I received, constantly being compared to the tiny double zero that was my sister. She'd say things like, look how big your thighs are compared to Janet's. I stared at my reflection in the dressing room mirror. Bile filled my throat, the burning creeping from my esophagus to the tip of my tongue and back down. She's right. I'm disgusting. I thought. In high school, I joined the soccer team, lost weight. I can finally make her proud. I'd lied to myself once again. Every home game, I looked at the stands, scanning the crowd for a familiar face. I should have given up after the first several games my parents missed. Dad would always be busy with work, and when he wasn't busy with work, he'd be busy getting drunk. But yet, I still scanned the crowds slowly shrinking, feeling like I was that child on the cold staircase when I saw my teammates' parents run off the, off the stands into the field to greet their precious cupcake. I feel nauseous. I'm going to puke. I'm so embarrassed. Can they tell? To this day, these memories replay in my head. The feelings they gave me replay in my body. Sometimes, I close my eyes and wince at a slap from long ago. I wish someone had spoken up for me. I wish my father would have put the bottle aside and actually spent time with us to see the cruelties being done to me. I wish my teachers had said something. That was great, Jennifer. You're really making some good progress. I'll see you next week. I look up. 
eyes red and swollen. For the first time in my life, I am telling my story to someone. It feels good, like there has been a weight lifted off my shoulders. Liberating. I had been feeling like I was turning into her, filled with anger every time the baby cried. They call it postpartum depression and rage. I refuse to be like her. I refuse to let my emotions get the best of me. I refuse to do anything that will harm my daughter. I don't want her scheduling weekly therapist appointments to work out trauma. I will be better than that. I am better than that. I am not her. As I sit here typing the last remnants of a glimpse into my story, my now two-year-old daughter is sitting on my lap eating a cookie, even though she refused to eat her dinner. I love you, cupcake. I whisper in her ear. She looks up. Big brown eyes like mine stare back at me. And with, with chocolate-stained lips, she says, I love you, cupcake. <laughs>